Has anyone heard from Dan Uledal if he's going to make it or not tonight? No? Okay. Well, if he joins late, he joins late. That's fine. Hey, there he is. He's on time. We good to go, Linda? Yep. Okay. I will call the Board of Aldermen uh, work session, joint session, combined session to order. 6.30. We have one item on the agenda, and I believe it is yours, Jack, correct? Yes, it is. I apologize there for the stumble. Um, we presented a fairly straightforward staff report associated with comprehensive plan implementation update. The comprehensive plan is laid out over a 10 year period. And, and if you may recall through that process, there were um, three categories of implementation actions that needed to be um, focused on. There was the zero to three, year, the three to seven year, and then the long range was seven to 10 year um, actions. And then overarching of all of it was the ongoing items. So they should occur, those ongoing should occur in perpetuity. Um, so what I've presented to you is a staff report that identifies all of the items. If you look at uh, the appendix in the comprehensive plan, these items are laid out. Um, in the near term, which is the zero to three stuff. And those are the first couple of pages of the report. And then um, the third uh, or the next portion of it is those items of zero to 10 years. I've identified those in, in, uh, in this staff report as well. We've identified the priority listing of the zero to three year stuff with a red or a blue. Um, and then have updated each item as we've completed them or the progress where we're at, what we need to do. So if you've all read through that, instead of me reading it to you again, um, I think it'd be best just to open this up for direct questions or sort of concepts or anything you all want to, to go over. Anyone have any questions for Jack? I, I have one right off the bat. Uh, so in B, B, E, uh, three, the overlay district, do you have any idea what something like that would cost if we hired consultants to do that? Not off the, without, I haven't really evaluated it with a consultant, um, somebody that does that kind of stuff, but I would say you're probably in the 20, 25 range. Okay. Um, because you're going to have to have know, all the drawings and the um, somewhat of a survey done, um, et cetera. So 20 would probably be on the a safe middle mid range for that. And since that's tied to that three, the, the whole BE3 with the uh, incentives for economic development, I, I think those can work in parallel. But if we're going to get that done in that zero to three timeline, I think that's something we need to look at budget for probably next year then. Yeah, the, the sooner we can get, uh, you know, if we put that in the 23 budget, it'll certainly be enough time to do it. It will give us a little bit more time to, uh, to see what kind of growth happens down in that area as well um, and what changes may come in. And then we can, we can start with that uh, overlay area down there. Okay. Anybody else have any, I mean, we'll just start kind of at the top. Anybody else have any questions on it, uh, that one? BE3. Tourism is pretty straightforward. Housing, we've kind of done some stuff that's pretty straightforward. Uh, industrial, this is one everyone on this board can help with. I know Dan Hartman's tired of me beating him up on this one, but um, <laughs> really getting that industrial zone expanded. If, if anybody has not driven back to First Park, I recommend that you do sometime this week. Right, Jack? Yes. The base, the base uh, asphalt is in. You can't get, you can't get in it yet, and they're going to be putting the second. It's getting fairly close. So, so one of the ones we, uh, I can skip ahead to is the uh, ED one, which is the work with Metropolitan Community College. I know we started on this a little early in the pandemic. I know the school district was 
This is one of the only thing Dr. Schutz ever really asked me about early on is trying to get us part of their taxing district and things kind of changed at the state level where the school itself was able to put this on. Um, any appetite to tackle that one still? Or have you heard really anything from them, Cynthia? Or I know it was on the ballot. It didn't do well. Yeah, it was on the ballot. It did not pass. And actually, Todd and I have not discussed that since that ballot. Um, he and I meet on Friday, so I can bring that up again with him. Yeah, because if it's going to be on our zero to three, you know, list here, high priority, uh, we kind of need some partnership on that one and to see if it's still a priority for them. If it's not a priority for them or if it's not a priority for the community, we can pull it off. That's an easy thing to change. So, yep. yeah. Um, I'll follow up with him on Friday. Yep. Strength in neighborhoods. I think uh, Alderman Chevalier wanted to touch on, uh, you know, it's on, it's in the budget, but this is one that, uh, we're looking at grants and different things for the neighborhood grants. Once that's, if the budget gets approved and the neighborhood grant survives the, the budget process, then staff can help develop what that looks like. So I think we're hitting some of those areas, you know, walk, even with some of the walkability and connectivity, I know like Harbor Lakes has trails that they need to improve and, and things. Downtown Main Street, we're, we've got that in budget right now too, if that gets approved. Right, that's in tonight's draft budget, 20, 20 grand there. Um, target key industry niches. Again, this is something everybody on the board can kind of help with between Northland Regional Chamber, uh, places you work for, places you work with, just you know, always advocating for Smithville and trying to get people to locate here. Uh, parks and trails, you know, we got the master plan going. Distributed recreation. Looks like we've made some we're making some progress on that. Uh, coordinating funding and planning activities between city and schools. That ED two and college. So that that goes back to that one bullet. So that's really most everything that's kind of on Jacks. That quickly scrolling through it. Is there any items anybody has seen in the comp plan that you think we need to maybe look at pushing a little more effort on? I know EDC didn't have a full meeting the other day. We still need to get some feedback from them on economic incentives, but um, I think for us as a board, we really need that feedback from EDC prior to our board retreat so we can get some of that stuff into the plan for next year and budget it. If, if that overlay really is priority and incentives are you know priority, we need to start looking at that around retreat time probably. And, and just so you, Anna and I anticipate um, coordinating some EDC conversation over the next six months or so, um, so that we are working down this path, at least on the incentive side, to get a better understanding of that stuff. So that by the time the retreat comes around in what May, I think it is, when that retreat stuff uh, usually occurs, hopefully we'll be, that's seven or eight months away, and it gives us a little bit of legwork that will have occurred at the EDC level that we can bring to the board for a little better clarification of the final, final way uh, side. Yeah, I know one of the EDC questions was the uh, do they have marching orders from our board? And um, one of the things I'd like to see is make sure that they have this check, even if they just have this memo from Jack on their desk when they're meeting to say, hey, these are the board priorities. Um, they're adopted by the board. This is our zero to three this is our all the way out to 10 and plus um but this memo is well put together jack i appreciate it and, and cynthia and everyone else who helped I'm, I'm, i know it wasn't i know it's a team effort to put these things together so i think it presented it well and i think it, it, there's not a lot of questions because you answered a lot of them with the memo and if i may also jump in um jack and i had a brief discussion this afternoon and we're trying to um coordinate and figure out the best way to address this because um jack and my uh, technical skills when it comes to some of the other um, formats and presenting information is somewhat limited, but um, would like to be able to put this together in a dashboard format so that we can very quickly see where we're on target, where we where things have changed, um, what priorities we're working on when. Um, so we'll be reaching out to various members of staff in, in providing some assistance on that. So it's even a little bit more um, uh, user friendly in that review. Yes. 
And Cindy, I think you forgot the most important thing you discussed uh, earlier today on that, and that is it makes it really easy for the public to see where yes, we're at. Absolutely. More so than more so than you all who are going to be dealing with it on a weekly or monthly basis, but the public won't see it if they can go to a simple, easy to read. Here's the priorities we're working on. Exactly. We're, yeah, when and we're I, ready and to do the next one in ten years. We'll have more people interested. Updated in that way, exactly. And if I may, just to springboard a little bit off of this as well, um, Jack and I had another conversation today, and related to the comp plan and related to our strategic planning, but thinking about movement we're making in the community. Um, the International City County Management Association conference is this week. Um, Anna, Stephen, Myra, um, and Gina and I have been viewing, it is um, in Portland, but they have a virtual platform. And we have been viewing a number of the sessions and keynotes. And this morning's keynote's title was the downtownification of America. And it really focused on um, some of those places where suburbia is not necessarily preferred, you know, the stereotypical suburban area of strip malls and sprawling neighborhoods that aren't inviting. Um, and, and the presenter, as she presented information um, and kind of desires for the future, it was really interesting in how she talked about providing spaces that are even in suburban areas and more rural areas have a, an urban feel to them. Um, streets that are maybe a little tighter tree line streets, more traffic control, uh, higher density in some areas, entertainment and other options closer to the residential. A lot of what we've talked about in our downtown area. Our comp plan really um, reinforces a lot of the information that was discussed in that presentation where we have more traditional opportunities for suburban type and rural housing in our northern part of town. That interior, our oasis of um, that more metropolitan feel, and then our linkage to the Kansas City area. So Jack and I were talking, we're really excited how our comp plan and our strategic planning really seem to um, align with what we see as the future and what's desired by a lot of people. So it's it's kind of fun to, to watch that and think, hey, we went through that process here um, over the last couple of years. So just wanted to point that out as we talk about the comp plan. Sounds good. Don't cut <clears throat> the grass. Mayor, um, I just want to echo your comments on, on uh, <laughs> um, the job Jack's doing. I, I think that we have a lot of vision. All of us as a governing body uh, have an opportunity. We kind of have our marching orders um, I get the opportunity uh, to, to live these marching orders every day when it comes to housing and commercial. And, and I just, I can't be more excited about what we have in front of us as a city. So job well done, Jack. Thanks, Cynthia and Mayor. Hey, Dan, can you share some of those stats you were texting me during your conference uh, that align with this? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, let me pull it up. So last week we had uh, state director meetings Three times a year we have meetings this year was in kansas city where the missouri realtors association gets together with 31 different boards uh, uh, associations throughout and we had a we had a uh, macro level view last week an economist was uh talking so i'm gonna pull them up here mayor but it was just very fascinating um <clears throat> they talked a lot about um, hang on here my phone I just I have a lot of these one of the one of the interesting one of the interesting ahead, things he said was uh, the reshoring of uh, companies. Mm -hmm. uh, the pandemic has shown that uh, we can't always uh, depend on offshore manufacturing, and wide open spaces exist in the Midwest, not on the coast. Um, in some of the states, like Texas and one other, you said they're getting a lot of uh, strain from people moving from the coast. So some of those people are starting to move more towards mm -hmm. our area. Um, because we have the infrastructure, you know, electricity, water, land that they don't have in some of those areas. So, no, that's 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 uh, really talked about our industrial growth, our 
our population growth, the return of ag, they believe that agriculture demand will be off the charts. Missoula, Missouri is a very big ag state. Um, we've just hit global food shortages and prices that um, rival those in the 1970s. Um, you know, growing food insecurity, not to be a downer, but uh, U.S. farm product demand will be a critical need, as with machinery technology and sustainable growing technologies. But really talked a lot. Um, the, the mayor talked about the 69% likely or extremely likely to reach shore in the future. That means coming from the coast inward, and Missouri is going to be a key player in this um, you know, over the next few years. So it, it's, there's no one solution, but, um, you know, we really are becoming that distribution hub because of our interstates and our location in the country. And I think we can reach, Mayor, wasn't it 78 to 80% of the mid of the United States in a day or two of shipping. So, I mean, it's, it's a high number. So we're really primed for growth. And I think the Northland, especially here. And I talked to uh, our former alderman, current state representative, Josh Hulbert, last week. And that's one of the things we really focus on in Jeff City. And and the reason they supported the, the gas tax that went into effect October 1st, if you all didn't notice, the two and a half cent gas tax went into effect October 1st. And one thing they mentioned that is that Missouri, mo most goods go through Missouri. And, and we're so close to every state drivable that, you know, they're going to continue to home here and and have those hubs here. So some of those need to end up in Smithville. And we need, so that when it goes to that bullet point Jack had on, on industrial, Jack, as far as I know, we're pretty much tapped on industrial right now, right? There's not really any industrial land available after this new development, right? Yeah, after um, there's literally four lots available in the industrial park, um, which is under construction first park. Um, and they are, you know, 0.89 acre lots. There's four of them, five of them, excuse me, five. So about six acres of land total. Um, so my guess is um, either the next 30 acre tract uh, to the south in that development will need to come for another phase from that developer, or we're going to be tapped out. Uh, we're, we've got plenty of land around that area that would be primed for the comprehensive plans plan for additional industrial, um, but without anything added, we're, we're going to be out of industrial land rather quick. As we sit now, we're almost out of residential lots, so we can speed the process up on the developer end in both residential and industrial. That'll be beneficial to us. And the comp plan calls for 100 acres uh, industrial, and that's the citizens asked not just the number we came up with that was based on the surveys yeah um yeah and we're out of i mean we're out of lots right for residential i know dan's not yeah, gonna have a plethora of houses to sell you know for any of the realtors <laughs> not yeah, a lot of new construction going on yeah, there's a few we're lots. working on it aren't we jack we're we're doing what we can to identify yeah. those lots and daily conversations i know not just me several other realtors and developers yeah. so. yep and i'm as i mentioned in the i'm having regular conversations with developers for different types of projects on a weekly basis um a lot of interest in smithville they're just trying to get the numbers right this whole um, supply chain shortage across multiple sectors has kicked everybody in the teeth pretty hard but they all want to move the projects in Smithville, they're just trying to find the right ones. Any other questions or comments? And do we just, are we gonna, we're going to adjourn and then we'll do the same Zoom, right? Okay. I want to give you everybody at least a couple minute break. But... Dan's on fire. Everybody good? All right, when's our next update? Next year? Six months? What are we gonna do? My guess is it would be appropriate to do it right before the board retreat in May okay. or June. Sounds good. 18 months. Okay. All right, well, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn then. Mayor, I'll make a motion to adjourn our work session meeting. Thank you, do I have a second? Second.
Thank you. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. See you all back here in a couple minutes.